Well, it is a pleasure to welcome Earl Billings to the studio, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank it's you. It's great to see you. All right. All right. So previews starting and then opening night is Friday for a really incredible show, a Pulitzer Prize winning dramedy that really got a lot, a lot of attention when it opened. This is called Between Riverside and Crazy. Mm -hmm. Tell me about how this project came to you and why did you decide to do it? Well, it came to me through uh, Kenny, who I've known for over, over 30 years. Yeah. And he said he had an opening and he wanted me to come down and, uh, and do it. So I read it and it was about an old, creaky, uh, drunk man who was bitter and angry at the world. And I said, well, thanks, Kenny. That's what you think of me, right? Right, <laughs> right. Away. right away. Why said, did you think Earl, of me yeah, first? Earl can yeah. come down here and do this. But I looked at it, and I read it, and I said, this is the hardest thing I would attempt to do in many, many years. Wow. The character is so volatile. He's so, uh, he's so angry. And then, then this redemption that happens in the show where he, he, he comes to being back to what he should have been years ago. And I said, this is going to be hard. Wow. So, I want to do it. <laughs> yeah. So for something that's that emotional and complex, mm -hmm. where do you as an actor begin your preparation for that? Well, I personally, because I've been doing it for over 50 years now, and my, my wife is always watching me, is that I bring, up, I bring up all the emotions that you have, all the ones you have in your body, and, uh, and then you start pushing the ones down that you don't need. Huh. You know, you start putting those back into place, and uh, you save the others. And so, so to outsiders, it looks like you're kind of changing your personality, but what you're doing is bringing the things you need and, the, and pushing down the ones you don't. Yeah. Other thing is that your own sense of um, humanity, your own sense of, of people you know that you can incorporate in this. Uh, and then when you're as old as I am, when you start knowing all these personalities that you can bring into it. Mm -hmm. But basically, you have to uh, let the human being in you come out. People think acting is hiding behind a character. No, acting is, is showing yourself, is revealing. Mm -hmm. and this is why it hurts sometimes wow. when you're doing something really t hard, and that's why some people can't really act because they're on the surface. They won't go down because they don't want you to see them or ah. who they are, and who you are is what everybody else is. Yeah. You know, the things that hurt you are the things that hurt everyone else around you. Yeah. You know, that's really interesting. Well, so let's talk about this particular production. Yes. I know Kenny uh, Leon's True Colors Theater is really uh, incredible. Yes. It does great work. And of course, Kenny Leon is a huge name <laughs> in theater. What's it been like working in this camp of actors and with this particular company? Well, every act, every acting group you work with, and I've been doing theater for 30, 40 years now, have a distinct personality, and that personality is always uh, reflected in the leadership, mm -hmm. you see. And um, because Kenny is a... Um, I call him, I call him a, a, a cut the slack kind of guy. Hmm. You know, he wants to see what you have, what you want to do, and then he will help you do it, yeah. you know. So he's an accommodator. Working with this group and the people, this is my second time working with him. I did mm -hmm. a play, what, four years ago for him, uh, uh, Style the Blind Pig, and we had the same experience where uh, the entire company, all the office workers, all the crew, pull together to do this production. Mm -hmm. And so you, it relieves you of a lot of other things that you can just yeah. concentrate on the work. And then Kenny being an actor also, you know, he'll come by and he'll snicker and say, don't do that no more. And I say, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> he, know, he knows and you can't sleep nothing by him, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're being watched. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> well, let's, let's go back. You mm -hmm. mentioned your career. You've done this for a few decades now. Yes, yes. So how did you get into acting? You were born in Cleveland. In Cleveland, what Ohio. What took you into the performing arts world? Well, uh, we lived um, in the beginning when I was like four or five years old uh, in Cleveland on the east side. And there was a theater there and, and settlement house called Caramel Theater in Cleveland. It's a world famous integrated theater started in 1938 or something. And I used to drive my tricycle in the parking lot, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And then the, the children's the theater director came out one day after she had seen me every day and stuff. She said, come here, little boy. And I came over and I've been in theater ever since. <laughs> 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 and really, uh, and the only job I ever had out of this, you know, was um, when I was in the Navy. Wow. But I have also worked as the arts administrator, uh, um, the old Free Southern Theater down in, uh, in uh, what, Louisiana. I was artistic director of. But um, the career was uh, just, this was haphazard, but yeah. it all wound up coming to California. Yeah. And then everything just picks up. Well, and you are 
I think much more of an exception than the rule of somebody who has had true longevity in this business. I mean, you have been steadily working for mm -hmm. a long time. How how does that happen? Well, it feels steadily yeah. to us. It, I, it is. No, it is. is. It actually has been. But I I, I live by uh, the motto of, J of uh, Jimmy Cagney, James Cagney. He yeah. said, I go home after work. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, that's how you have longevity. Yeah, you yeah. Know. I never got caught up in the um, in the partying and the yeah. other stuff or the, the career li Hollywood lifestyle. The careerism yeah. also, you yeah. know. I figure when you hire publishers, like any like any other business, then you put yourself in play. The press, yeah. you know, if you sell the press, you want to be in front of the press, then the press have the reason to go into your life, yeah. and they become part yeah. of it. I never bought into that, so I wow. never had a press agent. Wow. And I figured for where I came from in Cleveland that if any place I would land in the business, I was ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. I was ahead of the game. And so um, I usually, when I started out, I did everything. I see the kids now kind of specialize. I'm a, I'm a TV actor or I'm a stage actor. And yeah. my profession was actor. Mm -hmm. you know, and so I did commercials, I did, uh, I did PSAs, I did anything mm -hmm. I get my hands on. I did theater and that. And so my career was acting. Yep. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and that has allowed you to have such a, I imagine, well-rounded career. You yes. Do all kinds of parts. You've worked with, with many different styles of actors and directors. Let Let's talk though. I mean, do you? What do you prefer? Do you prefer theater, film, television, or is it all just interesting work to you? It's all interesting work. It's yeah. all different. All demands different demands upon you. Um, you know, I did the AFLAC commercials, uh, you know, there in Columbus, Georgia, yeah. the headquarters, for 12 years. Right. And I never uttered a word. <laughs> yeah. I was always at yeah. the end of the commercials. I was the only one who could see the duck. That was the gag for going on. And I just had fun that. And um, commercials take a you know, small amount of time, but more intense work. Uh, the film takes a long time and a little bit of work per day. Mm -hmm. The theater is just smacks you in the face and you get instant gratification yeah. or you get instant um, uh, failure because right, you know, right, the right. audience don't clap, you know right away, I, I got to <laughs> yeah. do something else. Um, but I, I, I think all actors like the, um, the, uh, the stage because we're all in the room together mm -hmm. and the, the audience is like peeking in on you. Yeah. And we like that spontaneity because there is another energy in that room yeah. if it's really smoking, it's really going good. Um, film, you're in somebody else's hands. Right, After you know, right. people say, boy, I like that performance in that film, but that was 37 takes and some pacing together. Right, <laughs> you don't really right, know what right, the performance right, was actually like. Right. Yeah. Whereas in theater, you are truly creating your performance from start to finish. Day to day. Yeah. Right. And but, well, so what do people, when people, you have one of those faces where people, I know that guy yeah. from somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Do you get that all the time? Like, did we meet somewhere? Uh, did we? I did a commercial once where I was a foot, I was a football referee, and I, I I called the players over, and I don't have a coin flip. Uh huh. And that was the gag. It was uh, airline. After that, I couldn't go through an airport with somebody hollering, "I got a quarter for you. I got a dollar for <laughs> ah, you." Right? They, you know. <laughs> but uh, it's interesting that many more people than you think actually reads the credit yeah, and so they yeah, really yeah, know who yeah, you are yeah and uh, fortunately I, you know uh, 21 years with my, with my wife she she I was so busy looking down working and she was the one who made me look up and she was saying don't you know who you are wow and I said, no one wow. <laughs> haven't had time to deal with that and so what she did is just, she showed me around and she made me look around and say god I get the uh, uh, the Bellagio restaurant and we having breakfast and she hits me in the side. There was this guy with his wife and kids, and he was aiming his camera so he could get a picture <laughs> of me. You know, I, thought, I thought how ridiculous that was, yeah. but then I realized that um, people know who you are. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, well, and now it's so interesting. You know, the other day when, when we were talking about doing this interview, all I had to do was go up to YouTube, pull up an episode of What's Happening. That guy, right there. It's guy. All, the work lives on. The work lives on. I have to right. ask you about that show. Uh, I was growing up in the 80s, and that was one of my favorite shows growing yeah, up. You know, what was it like working on that series? You know what it was like when 40-year-olds actually, I saw you when I was a kid. Well, not to, yes, yeah, so we don't want to make anyone feel their age or anything, but, you know. Well, how, that was, that's the show that brought me from Louisiana, uh, New Orleans, to, uh, to uh, California. Um, I, uh, 
it's a, it's a really funny story because actors hate, hate for somebody to give them line readings, you know, right. it? and they, they get all offended. But there was a casting director named Jan Murray, and this, she's died years ago, and she was a powerhouse casting director for Norman Lear and that whole group. And so I went in for the interview, and I read it, and she says, nah, she says, do it this way. She said, blah, 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 blah. And I'm getting off pads. I was like, oh, gee. So I said, okay, blah, 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 blah. She said, come on in. So we go to the producers. Yeah. I go, blah, blah, blah. She they said, that's great. <laughs> you know, and they hired me for a recurring role on it. And I'm scratching my head and said, never say never, never right. doubt what people right. sometimes tell you, right. you know, as I see it. And, uh, you know, there, there was most of the... Uh, yeah, the most of the cast, except for Mabel King, who had just won a Tony for The Wiz. Yeah. She played the mother. Uh, most of the cast were uh, first-timers. Right. And so they were learning, uh, and it was just uh, the energy of people doing it for the first time becomes contagious. Oh, sure. You know. Uh, uh, and so, you know, you don't want to sit back like the old jaded old man saying, well, you know. <laughs> and that was, I guess, I was in my 30s then. And, uh, but it was just, uh, it was an exciting time. Yeah. But TV things... Is 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 um, what is the word I'm looking for? Like like sand, like like quicksand. It's like fleeting. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's like, uh, uh, down the hall was um, um, Waverly's Wonders uh, yeah. with the quarterback um, for the New York New York uh, Jets. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> oh, I have no <laughs> yeah, idea. right. I have to look it up. Yeah. All right, and um, he 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 pulls in his, in his pocket space, and I noticed that they had. Uh, they had painted over his name, oh. and <laughs> he was coming to work, and he didn't know that he had, the show was canceled. Oh, That's what right. happens to oh, you. Yeah. The show was canceled, they just erase you away, you know. Um, it's the business part yes, of show right. business. Yeah. And no one had told him. And yeah. I said, well, that's what the business is. Wow. You know. Well, you're, I think you're a great person to, to talk to about this. So, you know, we Atlanta is becoming more and more of a destination for movie making, right. for series, for great theater. It's got a terrific theater scene here. A lot of people want to get where you are, want to be a working actor. What advice do you give? I, maybe a tough question, but what, what what is your best advice for young people who want to be part of this industry now? It's hard for me to tell a new person coming in now because when I came in, it was a different world it was altogether. Different. Yeah. Uh, but I noticed, the, the, I noticed the one thing that all the young actors coming in now have in common is that they all want to be movie stars instantly. Mm -hmm. And there's a there's a lot of work involved on yourself before that could happen. Uh, there's a. I never wanted to be a businessman, but in the business now, you have to be a businessman too. Mm -hmm. You know. And everybody gets a show, and then they go to they move to Malibu, and they buy a Stutz Bearcat, you know. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that on your first show, yeah, yeah, <laughs> your, yeah. first, your first six weeks, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because they see it on TV and yeah. they think that's what it is. Uh, what I've seen missing is the dedication to the art of acting, you know, dedication to the art of theater. I I, I believe that that will always went out for you. I mean, most of the top names now are coming out of Juilliard, they're coming out of Yale Drama School. Uh, I sometimes think that may be too much, but um, their dedication to the art of acting is more important than how many things you do. Right. right? Right. Mm -hmm. So it's about learning your craft and, and, and wanting to really be an actor. Exactly. Not necessarily be famous. Right. Because uh, uh, Denzel was said, uh, Washington, he said that being an actor and being a movie star are two different jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, one's he strides away from because it's hard to, it takes up too much time. Right. You know, Ava Gabor, Jaja Gabor, they were movie stars. But, yeah. You yeah. Know, yeah. 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 But they didn't win any Oscars. Right. So that's right. what happens. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we can't mm -hmm. wait to see you on stage. Break a leg, sir. Uh, thank you for having thank me. Thank you very much. My okay, pleasure. Okay. Thank you.